Right, welcome back to the second part of the UGWF tutorial series, and today we're going to be grabbing geometry from CAD and preparing it for being used in, well, OpenFirm and Snappy Hacksmash. So in this video we're going to look at where we're going to get our GE4 profiles, what we need to do to those pro four profiles in order to load them into SolidWorks, and then what we need to do inside SolidWorks to actually get geometry that we can then analyze. So this is really just going to cover the basics of making a 3D wing of imported data and uh, really the, a couple of very small things we need to check so that our open foam mesher is, is going to be happy with what we output it. So in terms of the workflow, we first need to get a DAT file of the aerofoil, which is going to define a, a bunch of points that lie on the aerofoil. Then we need to make sure that, well, we need to process those into a 3D uh, curve that SOLIDWORKS is going to be able to work with. Once we've imported that into SOLIDWORKS, we basically are going to create a very simple twisted and tapered wing. And then we're going to go over the very basic step for exporting it uh, from, from SOLIDWORKS into an ASCII.STL file for Snappy Hex Mesh. So let's get started. Right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to load up F something like FL tools. And we're really after this stat file over here. So this contains a bunch of coordinate data in X and in Y that defines this curve. Now, rather than copy paste this, what we can do is we can grab the selig data file. Uh, that's going to contain all of the data that we need, including the form name. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And we're going to dump that in a foil file, for example. And this is and this normally comes as a .dat file. So uh, save it as whatever you need. Once we have this static data file.csv, we're going to need to open it up in something like LibreOffice Calc or Excel or whatever spreadsheet editor of your choice you want to use. Uh, in this case, I'm not actually interested in what it's separated by. I'm just going to go fixed width and I'm going to chop the columns down here. And that should make sure that we get all the negative signs, which we do. So that's fine. So we're just going to load that up. This gives us a spreadsheet with X and Y values and the title. Now the title row, not useful to us. Let's go ahead and nuke that. I actually want to nuke that entire row, please. Delete sets of rows, I'm just blind. Right, so this is one thing where we really need to check that this makes sense. So our curve's going to start at 1, 0, and if we look at the actual aerofoil that we based this on, well, that we took this from, we need to make sure, so what this is doing is it's going 1, 0, then it's going positive as it goes back to x equals 0. So that's defining this path here. And the reason this is important is when you get back to 0, 0, you do not want to, the next point to read x equals one and then negative. Otherwise it's going to make, it's going to follow this and it's going to make this nice long panel through the middle and all the way back. Now this is guaranteed to screw up X foil and it's almost guaranteed to screw up your, 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 your day in CAD. So we need to make sure this goes to zero, which it does. And when it's zero, it increases from zero negative. So this actually goes one positive all the way back to zero and zero, it increases in X, but negative in Y. So this defines the full curve. It's going to start here, run through the middle at the origin and then end there. So that's correct. That's in order. Um, if it's not in order, if you're really stuck kind of separating this into two lists, positive and negative in most cases, and then ordering them and then re recombobulating them afterwards. Um, in most cases, you won't have to. So the next step is we need to make this a 3D curve. So we're just going to add two, I'm just going to add two zeros, and we're going to find a third dimension, which is going to be Z, and we're just going to make sure that's that's zero. So that now SolidWorks will be able to understand it's, uh, it's, a, it's a curve in the XY plane, and it lies on the is equal zero plane. Final step is to export this. And we need to, sorry, not to export, to save as. We are going to export it. We're going to export it to a CSV and we're going to tick edit filter settings. I'm just going to give it a semi sensible name real quick. Uh, if I can click, yes, thank you. Let's go ahead and save that to a .csv. Let's just go caps just to keep it clean. Uh, we do want to save as, t as, a, as a CSV file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this around to tabs uh, purely because uh, SolidWorks reads tab separated values, not comma separated values. I don't know why. It's the tab is inferior in pretty much every way, but whatever. So now we have a TSV file. We actually need to remember to close this because Calc has a habit of locking the files and then we can't open them for nothing else. And the final thing we need to do before we go into SolidWorks is that SOLIDWORKS either accepts as SLD curve or a TXT file, so we just need to change this back to a .txt. And once we've done this, we should have, there we go, a nicely tab separated value file, which is ugly, but that is what SOLIDWORKS wants. So now when we run, when we look for curve through XYZ points, just type in XYZ in the search, uh, we browse the file, find the file, tell it it's a TXT file, load that up, and here we go. We have our points, we hit OK, 
And that creates this tiny little blue splodge in the middle. And the reason it does this is I'm currently in MMGS coordinate, well, units, which means in millimeters. And if you remember, this goes from zero to one is the, is, is the curve data we have. And obviously one in this case refers to millimeter. If we were in MKS, we'd have a one meter long error foil. In this case, it's one millimeter. It's not a huge problem. There's really, this actually, because it's unit, it's a, it's a unitary length. We're going to be able to work with that relatively easily. Uh, we're just going to create a sketch on the front plane. This is a curve. We obviously can't do it. Well, we can't actually do anything with it yet. And uh, we need to convert our entities onto our sketch. So project that curve onto the sketch plane. There we go, and then we just need to remove the on edge so that we can resize it. So at this point, we have a fully free and resizable airfoil. So the way I like to define things is I will generally put a single construction line vertical. I will make this and the origin coincident. I will make this and this tangent. Then I will make the origin and this line coincident. So that means that no matter what we do, the front of my aerofoil lies on this line at whatever angle we want it to be. And really at this point, we, can, we just need to define how long it is and what the angle is for the angle of attack. So to define the angle of attack, what we need to do is we need to first make a center line for this aerofoil. And then we simply need to define where our horizontal is. And we're just going to define a very, very nasty sort of two degree angle of attack. And then by dimensioning this line, tangent if i can get it there we go tangent or i can make a 200 mm long airfoil with two up degrees angle of attack so at this point we, we have a free scaled free positioned airfoil uh, to make this into a wing procedure is actually relatively simple we just need to go into reference geometry set a plane make that plane uh, parallel and offset from our plane that we drew that sketch on so if we wanted this in this case 600 millimeters between ribs we can go ahead and do that that's 600 millimeters like so uh, what we can do then is to just, we can either copy paste the, the, the sketch onto this plane, or we can create a new sketch on this plane. And what we can do is we can go ahead and convert some entities. So we could convert this that way. Um, I'm actually sort of a fan of the copy paste because although it is dirtier and that it can forget your it's for its references, uh, what it does let us do, if I can paste on here, where is paste or oh, whatever, paste. If we paste that on there, in that case, all we need to do to redefine the geometry is just to specify where this origin point lies. If it hasn't done that, I guess. So as you can see, the origin point is currently moving. If all we need to do then is to just grab the origin point, which is, come on. Right, so we're going to have to redefine all this. That and that and that are all going to be at an intersection. What the heck? What is going on here? You and you, I would like you to be coincident. Are you vertical still? That and that, this needs to be coincident, the origin. So now that is fully offset with, that is now an exact replica of this sketch. And we can just go ahead and change our angle of attack. So in this case, we're just gonna reduce the twist to zero degrees. For our trailing edge, and we will make it a little bit shorter. So we're gonna taper the trailing edge, like so. And then to make that into a wing, all we need to do is just to make a very basic loft. Now, thankfully, we have the trailing edge curve origin, which we can use to align the lofts. And there we go. We now have a very, very basic wing, which I think I want to taper a little bit more. So I'm just going to go ahead and taper that a fraction more. Let's go, I don't know, one, two, five. Hey. There we go. So that's a twisted tapered wing which is now ready, pretty much ready for analysis. The first thing we need to do, obviously, is to save because SOLIDWORKS has a horrible habit of crashing quite nastily. Uh, what I would like to do is just to name this something sensible again, 64A010. We'll save this out, and then for the measure, we need to get an STL file. So we're just gonna go ahead and change the save format to STL. Uh, as long as it's sensible, we should, there are the options here is to make sure it's an, it's an ASCII file and that the number of triangles is not completely insane. So in this case, that's quite high, but it's good enough. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. Yes. And that pretty much wraps up making an airfoil. Once we have the STL file, we will be able to feed this STL file into a SAPI hex mesh, generate our mesh, and then RAR simulation on that.